What you're going to get from me today is strictly my personal opinions based upon the limited information that I have at this time um, as to how I perceive these things to be. It's not meant to be a definitive um, conclusion as to any facts or evidence or the status of any investigation. This is just a preliminary summary of the information that I have available to me. Um, <coughs> Questions regarding the investigation should continue to be provided to the, the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigations, or DCI. Um, the Casper Police Department continues to work with DCI to reach a, a timely completion of the investigation. In addition to our officer, uh, Jacob Carlson, who was identified yesterday and who is currently at uh, Wyoming Medical Center, um, the second involved officer, and the first one to have contact with the suspect was Officer Randy Garrett. Randy Garrett is a two-year veteran of the Casper Police Department, and she is also a proud member of Patrol Team 4 of the Casper Police Department's Patrol Division. Events such as these are very troubling for a community, and they can have a profound impact on all of those that are involved. And despite the ongoing investigation, the Casper Police Department maintains its commitment to transparency. As such, we are releasing the police in-car video that captures this incident. The video was captured on an in-car video system that was in Officer Garrett's patrol vehicle. The vehicle was captured by the proprietary, proprietary fail-safe technology by the manufacturer's technology. Uh, because it was captured by the fail-safe technology, there is no audio that is going to accompany this uh, video. The video is going to capture the event from a distance, and not all of the events uh, are going to occur within the angle of view of the camera, so it's taken at quite a, a distance away, and portions of it are just not captured on there. The investigation of this complicated event is ongoing, and it's going to take some time to complete. An internal pro review process of the Casper Police Department is underway, but that also will take a great deal of time to complete. At this early stage of the investigation, there's been literally no opportunity for me to have been briefed by the investigators on any parts of the investigation, and all of that is ongoing without our participation. I've stated that, the, uh, that my intent today is only to discuss my perceptions and my views of having watched this video. Um, so I'm going to describe the video based upon what I think I see in it. Uh, this is not meant to be an informed opinion of all of the facts and all of the evidence because none of that has been made available to me. Our primary focus up to this point has been upon the health and welfare of Officer Carlson, his family, his co-workers, and the other employees of the Casper Police Department. <coughs> Despite the fact that this is just a preliminary investigation, some presumptions on my part. The Casper Police Department believes the release of the video will provide greater clarification to our citizens on the events that led to the death of the suspect and to the injuries sustained by Officer Carlson. A cursory review of the video's content confirms that the officer's contact with the suspect was in response to an ongoing vehicle complaint. The suspect is in the passenger seat of the operating vehicle. It is my belief that a three-year-old child is driving the vehicle upon the officer's arrival. The initial contact appears to be calm, non-threatening, and completely professional upon the part of the officers. Upon arrival of Officer Garrett, the suspect uh, comes out of the passenger side of the vehicle and is contacted by Officer Garrett. As you can tell by Officer Garrett's body language, this is uh, a non-aggressive encounter with the, the adult present in the car. Immediately you will notice that the suspect begins to adopt kind of strange body posture. It is my opinion that the uh, suspect uh, takes concrete efforts to change his point of view from the officer's perspective to conceal the right waistband area uh, from her view. Please take notice of that as it happens in the video. The, the video happens very fast, and so I'm, that's why I'm trying to describe it in advance so you'll know what is happening when you watch it. Upon the arrival of Officer Carlson, 
Uh, the suspect uh, reacts <coughs> definitively to Officer Carlson's presence and now not having, not finding himself in a position to conceal that portion of his body from the officers, you'll see the suspect will immediately try to adjust his position and, and again an effort in my opinion to conceal that area of the body where his handgun was at. As the uh, as the com the conversation continues between the the officers and the suspect, the suspect will turn and begin to back away from the officers. Um, in very short order, the suspect will will turn around in a, as in, in a manner that I would take to mean as after 27 years of law enforcement experience of somebody who's attempting to flee or getting ready to flee. You will see Officer Jake Carlson reach out and attempt to detain the suspect. At that time, without warning, without provocation, the suspect will immediately turn to face Officer Carlson. He will now have in his hand a handgun, and he will immediately begin to fire upon Officer Carlson at point-blank range. The video will demonstrate that Officer Carlson is immediately struck by multiple rounds of gunfire, and it will be later determined that these shots produced severe life-threatening wounds in Officer Carlson. As Officer Carlson is being struck, he has the internal fortitude and the reliance upon his training to draw his weapon and fire shots at the suspect. Both Officer Carlson and the suspect appear to be simultaneously struck yet again. It's important to me to note that as we hold this press conference, Officer Carlson is currently undergoing extensive surgery at Wyoming Medical Center, surgery that is anticipated to last at least six hours. And despite receiving immediate catastrophic wounds in this initial exchange of, of gunfire, Officer Carlson will remain in the fight. He will actively attempt to stop the dangerous acts actions of the suspect. While so doing, Officer Carlson will be struck yet again by more gunfire from the suspect, who at this time, though he is not visible within the, the video, is actively engaged in attempting to strike the officers uh, shooting through the narrow space underneath the car. There's no indication on the video whatsoever that the suspect has any regard for the children who still remain in the car at this time. Photographs published by the Casper Star Tribune appear to confirm the suspect was aiming at the officers through the space between, beneath the car, as indicated by the placement of rounds fired by the suspect, which struck the very bottom portions of the car all along the driver's side of the vehicle. Due to the constant gunfire from the suspect, the officers were forced to take shelter from the continuous gunfire behind the vehicle's tires. The video will demonstrate that the officers are aware of the children's presence, that they are communicating with the children, and it will even show Officer Garrett exposing herself to gunfire both above the vehicle, through the vehicle's windows, and underneath the vehicle as she holds hands with one of the children in an attempt to comfort that child while the battle was still going on. The video will demonstrate conclusively that the only person endangering the children was the suspect. Further, the video will conclusively document the valorous courage, the strength of will, and the resolute determination in the face of imminent and certain personal sacrifice on the part of Officer Jacob Carlson. The video will show that Officer Carlson remained in the fight until through catastrophic loss of blood, Jake's body would no longer respond to his strength of will and the orders that, his, that he was giving to his body. Additionally, the video will show Officer Garrett's attempts to continually communicate with her wounded partner, Officer Jacob Carlson. Lastly, the video will document the efforts to render first aid to both the suspect and Officer Carlson. The video that I'm about to show you today is 11 minutes worth of video. Um, it was not, uh, was not possible to, to, to give the, the entire video out. However, it is my preliminary opinion that the suspects, for reasons known only to himself, willfully attacked our police officers 
without warning, without provocation. It is also my opinion that Officer Carlson distinguished himself with valor and bravery in the face of evil. And I could not be any more proud of his dem demonstrated tenacity and his strength of will. It is my belief that a more thorough review of the facts after the completion of the ongoing investigation it's my belief that this will likely further demonstrate the heroic efforts of Officer Carlson as he served this community with pride, honor, and bravery. It's also my opinion that Officer Garrett's intuitive recognition that additional officers were needed at the scene played an integral role in the timely delivery of life-preserving medical attention to the critically wounded Officer Carlson. Lastly, it's also my opinion that the suspect was the lone person determining the outcome of this event and that he alone was responsible for any endangerment that the children that were present underwent, that passerbys, passersby in the area were exposed to, and that our community has suffered from. 